Hello, this is Sam Schneider. I'm a middle school music teacher in central New Jersey. I was featured on the My Tech Tool Belt podcast uh, talking about Classcraft. I do have another video uh, uploaded, and I'll have a link to it in the comments uh, about how I use Classcraft on a daily basis in my classroom. Uh, this is the interface for how I use Classcraft on a daily basis, but I did want to give you a little insight onto what a student account looks like. Uh, I'm going to be using this demo class here, uh, filled with Hunger Games characters. Just from a teacher perspective, uh, I'm going to deal some damage uh, just so students have something to do on, on the other end. So let's... I can do group damage up here by clicking this minus button. I'm going to say that they all forgot to put away their equipment. So not putting away equipment or books. Uh, now, in a normal class, what I could do is I could go individually and say, OK, who wants to protect Katniss? Or who wants to protect Primrose? And Katniss could do it. But sometimes you don't have time for that. So they added this nice feature called Deal with Damage Later. And all that happens is it goes behind my face, <laughs> goes up here where you've got a little hourglass and it says damage. And so when the students log in, they're actually able to interact with that themselves. I'm going to close my face because you don't need to see that. And I'm going to open up a student account. So uh, I have PETA's account up here right now. PETA is a mage. He's part of the District 12 team. And this is what it looks like when he logs in. Uh, he can see his, his outfit. Um, he can see that he's got full health right now, full AP. Uh, he's got some power. So let's, if Peter was late to class, he could use the power of teleport to avoid being damaged for being late. Um, that's a custom power that I have uh, for that. So it will say something different as a default power. Um, when students use this in my class, they do need to alert me that they're using teleport so I don't deal them damage by accident. Uh, the other power he has here is mana transfer. Uh, mana transfer allows him to kind of give AP action points back to the rest of his team. Uh, he gains a healthy amount of XP for it, so I'm going to make him use it. Ta-da! Just like that, he has used mana transfer. His AP, his action points, goes down, but the rest of his team benefits. Uh, so you can see that there's a class view. He could view all the people on his team. Um, and that is all there for him. Uh, it says here that he has one power point, meaning he could learn a new power. So if he goes back to his profile, he could click where it says learn powers. And this is just where students can see what powers they can try to learn. Uh, it shows what they need to learn to get to the next level of powers. So for instance, if they wanted to learn time warp, they would need to know teleport and invisibility prior to getting time warp. Uh, so this is just the learning power screen. Learning powers is very easy. You just click on the power you want, learn for one, ta-da, he has learned a power. Now, other things students can do, they have equipment that they could buy. I've given PETA 985 gold. Uh, you can buy outfits as a whole outfit. Um, typically, you need to be a certain level to unlock some of the fancier things. But if you wanted to buy something, you just click this Buy button. Uh, there are also other things in here. You could change individual items, like change out the belt. You could change out the hood. Um, you could customize the look. Uh, you also can equip pets. Uh, you need to fully train a pet, and you need to own the entire costume set in order to access the pet. Training the pet is very easy. Um, basically, all you do is you click Start, pet goes off, does its mission, and in one day, uh, you come back and you collect the reward from the pet and send it on the next mission. Now, this icon here, the interactive classroom content, that is actually an outdated feature. It's been replaced by these quests. So when I send a student to do a quest, this is oftentimes their homework or their self-paced learning. Uh, they go in, they can only see a portion of the map. Uh, if you wanted to see the full map, you could see it in the other video that I mentioned. They click on the introduction and read the cheesy story I wrote, click Start Quest, and now they could actually start progressing through. So this one here says some sound preparation. Uh, there's a story attached to it. 
there's a task attached to it where they have to watch this video on Foley artistry. And then the assignment, um, this one specific, they need to post a comment. So I would say, uh, I really liked the video, which is a terrible response to this assignment. I completely missed the purpose of the question, but I'm doing this as a demo. So I really like the video. Now, PETA can move on to the next thing. Uh, I have this set up as a self-paced quest, so as long as he turns something in, that's fine. He can go, but if you go back to my screen, uh, I can now see that PETA has completed part of the quest. I know it's hard to see. I can see that PETA has completed part of the quest. He claims he has done it. Um, it automatically gave him this, but if I went and read his response, I read his response, task, feedback. You can see that he wrote, I really like the video. I'm going to say, this does not address the question asked. And I could actually mark X. And now he is no longer able to do the next step. He needs to go back and fix his work before I'll move him on. Uh, now let's go back to Peter's screen. Other things that students have access to, uh, students can view messaging. Uh, they can send me a message directly uh, where I would just say, or he could say, hi, Mr. Schneider. I don't get why I did poorly. And I could respond back. Uh, if they're using the app, they can respond through the app as well. Now, one thing I mentioned, and I've received his message. One thing I mentioned was this delayed damage thing. So when a student does something wrong, um, they get a little damage notification there. Uh, PETA unfortunately doesn't have any powers that lets him interact with it. But if I log into Katniss's account, you'll be able to see that there is actually stuff for Katniss to do. So I'm gonna sign out, I'm gonna go find Katniss. All right, I had a little hiccup, and now I'm going to log into Katniss's account. And just actually before I get there, to show you, there are a couple ways to log into accounts. You can log in through Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, Clever, um, or you could use a username or email. So if your uh, school district does use Google Classroom or something of the like, uh, you can easily link student accounts. Uh, or you could do it simple and just have them use usernames and the like to create their accounts. Now, Katniss has logged in. Um, she has gained a lot of experience over the time, and she gets greeted with this lovely screen that says, you've reached level 14. Uh, because I've been doing demos with her for a while, she's a fairly high level. Um, when you get that message, it also shows you that you can buy new equipment. She's currently wearing uh, April Fool's sunglasses. Cat, uh, Classcraft does actually give uh, random holidays and seasons some some bonus free equipment that kids love to equip. But let's, the reason I logged into class, Katniss's Classcraft account uh, is to show you the delayed damage. So delayed damage again is how um, you can give damage to students without actually interrupting class. Basically what happens now is the students are the ones that have to interact with it. Uh, teachers can actually interact with it too and just do it later on in the class period, but I personally enjoy the delayed damage because it gives students more of a hands-on uh, play with Classcraft. So for instance, um, at some point, uh, everyone lost some health because they were talking during the volume meeting meter demo. So uh, Katniss clicks on Prim, she wants to protect Prim, and it tells her that she has 27 AP, and if she uses Protect 1, she loses 10 of those AP. So easy as that, Protect 1. Um, she went ahead, protected, and there we are. Now the next item, you can't actually access the next item down until all this has been resolved. Um, maybe she doesn't want to protect, well, she can't protect herself, but maybe she doesn't want to protect PETA. Um, PETA will just end up taking the damage. So I'm gonna switch over to my screen, which is this one over here. Um, oops, which is this one over here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give everyone their damage for the Mechas Valley. Oops, 
I've got a lot of delayed damage that I haven't dealt with. Um, so now if I go back to Katniss's screen, she'll be able to interact with the demo that I put before of putting away books, um, putting away equipment. So now she can interact with this. Um, they're going to lose 10 health each for this, and now she's going to protect PETA. She has 17 AP left, so she can use Protect 1, that loses 10, or she could use Protect 2, which loses 15. If she uses Protect 2, basically, it takes more dam or it takes more AP, causes her less damage, but earns her more experience. So we'll just go ahead and use that, ta-da! And just like that, the damage has been done. Um, now, unfortunately, she doesn't have enough AP to continue protecting everyone. So that's pretty much the end of, of her delayed damage. And then when I go back to my screen, you'll see that it just shows that Katniss has used Protect 2 on PETA, and we're waiting on everyone else. Um, and that is pretty much the student perspective of Classcraft um, from their own screen. Uh, you, again, they can view all of their powers that they have under sentences. If someone had fallen in battle or died, they'd be able to see that. Um, Katniss does have some more pets in training. This is what it looks like when they've completed a training. So they could just click that and send their pet out on another mission. Uh, students can actually train multiple pets at once. Some people really love doing that. Uh, the pets are adorable, and uh, you get them again when you unlock a full armor set. Classcraft uh, has definitely changed the way I do my classroom. Uh, it has uh, given the students more of a responsibility for their behaviors. It's given them more of a chance to interact with their learning. Uh, it's taken the role of bad guy away from me and kind of put it on the game. I'm just the game master. Uh, I do go into more detail of how I use it and how I know other teachers use it uh, in the podcast episode. There's a link to that in the description for this video. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, you could reach me at schmazzy on Twitter. Uh, that is at sign S-C-H-M-A-Z-Z-Y. Uh, I do respond to direct messages and I'll be happy to help you with any questions you have. Uh, feel free to check out Classcraft. I hope you consider making it a part of your classroom and it's done wonders for me and I will happily help you uh, make it the perfect uh, classroom management tool for you as well. Uh, thank you all for watching and good luck. Happy gaming.